Welcome to episode one of this Let's Play series. So it's actually not really a Let's Play series. It's a bit of a Let's Play slash tutorial series of Shadows of Forbidden Gods. And I'm going to be trying to theme each video as much as I can in amongst the Let's Play content. Uh, in this case, we're going to start a new game and evaluate the map to see if it's worth playing. I'll try to sort of give you some examples. We'll start a few different times. If I go into here, we'll just keep on playing with the first god. I covered this in the last episode. So just go and select, select. Um, I'll choose the 28 by 28. I do like that size, actually. It's not overwhelming, and it does give us enough to sort of then have a bit of a look at. It gives us, yeah, it gives us potential to do all sorts of different things. So uh, I'll just leave everything else on defaults. We'll go to random world, and we'll start. Turn off the hints, in through there. Now, um, uh, so an orc army uh, uh, plunders one gold from a different citadel. Yeah, so this is just a, an event that has happened. Um, there's going to be certain things that will sort of then come on. Now, the the first thing to evaluate is where you are in the world. So you start off in the Elder Tomb if you're playing as the She Who Will Feast. And so this is actually our, our source of, of shadow. It comes from this particular location. And what we need to do is we need to corrupt humanity. So what we need is these little lines. We need these going to places that matter. And if we have a look and see this one, we can see that these don't matter because there's no humanity here at all. So these are just sort of ruins and um, uh, like ancient ruins in through there. The other lines in through here, though, we've got a, a one that, that goes into a into a city. So that's actually an important uh, that would be important to sort of know. So only one connection into there. You really want to have direct connection. Otherwise, I would start again if you're a new player. You can play without it. And I'll show you how to look for that as well. But that's that goes straight to a city. Now, the important things with trying to enshadow a city, if we only had one connection that went into a single city, I would still start again. The reason for that is their security is really high and it makes it very difficult to infiltrate the cities if that's the case. So it can take an exorbitant amount of time. The only way around that is to reduce the security in the city and there's different ways to do that. But if it's your first game, and, it, and the only connection you have is to a city, then start again. This is good for us, though, because what we're seeing is we've got a village, which has only got security level of one, and a fort, which also has a security level of one. The forts are different in the fact that they actually have like a, a defense factor, which makes it more difficult to attack. But to actually infiltrate, it's very easy to infiltrate a fort or a village, and we can infiltrate both of those very, very readily with this security aspect. So that's actually, that's telling me that this is already a good a good position to go in. Next step, let's actually see if this whole kingdom is worth having a bit of a look at. So if we sort of zoom back out and sort of look at the whole map, just have a bit of a look at the, the map there. I'll just zoom in a little bit so we can see everything. So we've just got two land masses. That's quite interesting, actually. If I press the number one key, now this there will be a map mode at the bottom here eventually in the game but at this stage just press number one that then shows you what's going on in the map now areas in this sort of grayish color are not controlled by anyone that's just the wastelands and you can see that there's usually north and south is going to have wastelands sometimes there'll be wastelands in the middle of the map as well the ocean is in the middle through here so there's a lot of ocean on this particular map there's um we've got a orc horde over this side we've got a um a very, very small queendom in through there, right next to where we are. So that's actually also something that could be quite susceptible. There's a reasonable size kingdom in here, a smallish kingdoms, two, two smallish kingdoms in, the, in through that side. Uh, this is an interesting looking map. This looks fairly good. The biggest group is over here. So getting the shadow across to that side could be quite difficult. Um, getting the shadow out from here, we can know, we know that we've already got access across into these various kingdoms and queendoms. We can we can manage that um, from this location fairly, fairly readily. I'll talk a little bit about other opportunities. So if you press now the number seven key, so the seven key, I don't know if it shows up on here. Um, that's heroes, modifiers. Let's make sure we've got nothing there. No, it's not that. No, look, I think it's best just if you just follow what I do. <laughs> it's easier using the number keys than actually using these little buttons. The buttons, not all the not all of the not all of what you need is there. So very quickly, number one is the actual kingdoms, so that's the nations. Number two is the visibility of your agents, which we'll talk about when we're in the game, and uh, that's quite important. Uh, very briefly, if I click on my agent. He's visible from no location. So no one knows about him at this stage. As he gets more profile, that visibility will start to creep out into the world and more 
aid, more of, uh, heroes will then become aware of him if that profile increases. And if his menace is high enough, it will then force them to go and fight him or, 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 or motivate them to fight him. But so we want to keep the profile and the menace fairly low with a lot of our agents. Number three is the uh, inter inter international diplomacy. If I go and click on a, on a, a group in through here, that's interesting. That's interesting. Right from the start, we can see that there's a red pattern through there. These guys are possibly at war with each other. Well, they probably should be, I would, I would guess. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got tensions up through that side. Um, yeah, hostile hostile with the Lewin's Plain Horde. Hang on, that's, uh, it's host they're always going to be hostile with the Hordes. That looks like it's actually a... Um, that looks like it already has a um, tensions there. And that's just of interest. It's not really something we have to worry about. But that's... Um, is that right? Yeah, they seem to be... Um, they seem to be... They're not, at, they're not at war. I think they just... They really dislike each other. These other ones also don't think much of them. Uh, but they do like each other up through this side. Again, they're all friendly. Actually, there's a... Um, there's a problem there. Like there's actually... It looks, look, there's a war th happening in through there. There's a lot of conflict up through this side. So anyway, that's diplomacy. We don't have to look at that just yet. <laughs> It's sort of fun looking at this, though, and just getting a bit of a feel for what's going on in the world. Uh, the mask of infiltration is number four. Sorry, that was number three. Number four is the mask of infiltration. As you infiltrate the world, you can then sort of plot that by looking at the infiltration. I wish there was a shadow one as well, but there's not. The shadow would be an interesting one to actually have in there as well. Uh, the fifth is the awareness, and this is how aware the world is of you. And at this stage, they're not aware of us at all. Yeah, so conflicts will tend to have these red these red lines between different areas. We'll have a look at that when we actually get into another one, one of the other episodes. Uh, number six is a modifier one. It's going to be quite useful. The things that I would be looking at initially here as opportunities, and the ones we're looking for in particular are deep one cults. There's two there, one over here and one over here. Um, they actually allow us to then grow the shadow. So that's actually a way that we could actually in shadow and cause problems on this landmass. There's opportunities there. Uh, another thing that could be interesting would be wandering manticores. There's only two of them. No, yeah, two of them on the map, and they're both over this way. And one of them is actually in this orcish, orcish territory. Not that that matters much. These are these like if we can kill off a manticore ourselves, we get um, we get certain abilities. The heroes of the world will also be aiming for them to get the same abilities. And so, if we do it first, that's fine. Like that would be good. Um, we don't have to do that one, but it is something we could actually look at if we wanted to be playing a more aggressive game from the start. Uh, what else have we got? We've got Wandering Ogres. There's only four locations with those. Now, these can be recruited by us, and so that's something that we probably should look at. Um, at maybe getting an agent up there at some point just to go and start recruiting. Uh, we don't... like. It's, I'll get to that when we actually play the game, but that's an opportunity for us. The rest of the stuff I think we can sort of just ignore largely, uh, but they're the important ones. So... Deep One Cults, just make sure if, if or where they actually are. The Wandering Ogres for recruitment and the, um, and the Wandering Manticores for opportunities to, to boost your combat guys. All right, if you play, if that was the sixth. So if you now go to number seven, the mask is now the points of interest finder. And this is really the one to, to other than the direct connection, the next most important thing here is that you're looking for opportunities. Now we saw the Dark One Cults as an opportunity. The other opportunity we have is the Coven of Witches. So have a look and see where they actually are. And if they're in locations, for example, again, I think the Dark One cult was in one of these two locations. So we've got a, we've got a very, very strong ability to push out from here and create descent on this landmass. And so there is actually opportunities in through there. You can see that the color in through that side, in fact, if I zoom in there, we can sort of see that we've got like a citadel in through there, a fortress in through that side. And so this coven can can interrupt and, and infect all of the different things that are going on in that particular location up through this side. In fact, that red is showing the um, uh, we've got camps in through there. I'm not sure. It looks like they do actually have a problem with each other. That'll be interesting to sort of look at that a little bit later on. Anyway, that's um, so the covens are important. Now, there's one that's right next to where we started. We started in the Elder Tomb. So we've got a coven in through there. Uh, that probably won't help us much with this, to be honest. There's really not much that, that we can do with this location because it's self-contained. So we'll have a look at that in, in a minute. And we do have a coven in here. This one as well, really centrally located. And so we can push the shadow out from here. 
not so much down into the waist, but certainly out into this area. So that coven there is really valuable. Uh, this coven up and through here is really valuable. So have a quick look and think, okay, well, that's actually another, that there alone gives me an access with shadow there, an access with shadow there, access with shadow up in this way as well. Because the reason I'm not saying that this one is so much is because it's a city, so it's going to be difficult to push the infiltration into that particular city. If I go and click on that city, if I just press number escape, if I escape from there, it's a capital, and it's got a market docks and city palace with eight security. Very, very hard for us to infiltrate. I mean, eventually, if we did it, we would be able to... Actually, we possibly still could do that, you know? these, these Those three covens are our path to victory, really, in the game, uh, to, to very quickly sort of getting Shadow to go across the actual game itself. So that's the um, that's really the I guess the the basics of what to look for um, just to sort of see where those opportunities are. Now there's also going to be other opportunities as well, and another one that you can do very very easily to uh, to disrupt the humans is to look at the farming communities. And if there's not very many, and there's not very many on this map, <laughs> this is the this is one of the ways that the human cities get their food. And if you disrupt their food supply, they starve. And it causes all sorts of dissent. And if dissent is sort of in the in the cities, their security drops. And so you can use the lack of food to actually cause issues for them, where they basically end up becoming susceptible to the to the shadow. And so if we, for example, we wanted to, if we were creeping out from this location, this coven, uh, by getting rid of that one there, it will be feeding the various cities around the place. If we go to city palaces, all like that one, if it's got a direct connection, those four cities are all fed by that farmland. Now, also fortresses also supply food. So be aware that fortresses are difficult to uh, to raid, but but um, but farming communities are very, very easy. They're really easy pickings. And so we could do that very early on. And it's actually worth doing this. I mean, if we have a look at the city palaces in here again, that farming community through here affects all of these that we want to actually impact. So raiding those will... It will really upset everything we want, everything we want. So that sort of gives me an, an opportunity. Again, we're looking for opportunities and ways of playing the game. So farming communities can present opportunities like this as well. A lot of the other ones, not so much. There's the primal font at the very, very top of the map up there. Um, holy sites, which we can desecrate. Again, if we look at sort of areas that we're looking to control at some point, so... Possibly once we take all this over, that, that holy site, we could desecrate that holy site. That way we could bring in our, um, our vampire agent if we needed to. Uh, we've got a few different locations where we can ultimately do that as well. So, yeah, so this is a nice looking map, I've got to say, just from what we can sort of see through here. So, so six and seven. So six will give you the ability to sort of see what, uh, you know, what's available with your deep one cults and their, their opportunities as well. You know, potential for picking up various uh, other creatures before the humans kill them off. So we need to do that one relatively early if we're going to actually do that. Um, anyway, I think that that's uh, all we wanted to cover in this particular episode, really just whether this map is viable. And tick, yes, it is. <laughs> and it looks like fun. Uh, 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 let's extend a little bit beyond that because there's also other aspects about the game that can make the game a lot more fun, and that's particularly if we do see things like these different fights. So we can start to evaluate some of those as well. Now, if we keep on going, that was seven that we did, which was the uh, the points of interest finder. Number eight is the heroes, where the heroes actually are in the map actually are, and it'll give us the list of heroes on the on the map itself. Now, some of these will actually have certain motivations amongst themselves as well. So there'll be some that don't particularly like each other. The top one will always be the chosen one. And we can see that she's down in here at, the, at that location, sort of where we're going to be operating. But she comes from this particular faction up through here. When I hover over her, that's her city. That city there is her home, is, is her home but she happens to be down in the southern part of the map. This particular mage is, um, where is he? Down in here, I think. Um, and that's his home home, home city. Uh, we've got Mediator in through there, just doing different things. He's decimating the deep ones. We can see what they're all up to. Uh, so challenge, rest and, and resupply, etc., etc. Now, they've all got motivations, as I said before. Now, if you go to 9, you can sort of see what's coming, which is the trade routes. This is not really implemented from what I can understand just yet. This will be used. So these are the different areas that will be coming in the game <laughs> fairly soon where there's like a trade routes and we can see that we're you know from 
from the town of Zong to the to the city of Zikau. I wish the game didn't use all these words, but there is a trade route there, direct trade route between those two kingdoms, which I think are at war. Uh, from this, from these cities, we've got like a trade route that goes from um, from Zong to uh, Wexingi. So there's actually one that sort of snakes their way through that side. And I think that this will pre present opportunities for us to then go and raid the, uh, the these these routes. So that's, I think that's what's coming there, but it's, they're not really implemented. Now there's also another couple of keys that you can that you can click which don't actually show anywhere at all this one doesn't show anywhere on the map either f1 and f2 are also worth having a bit of a look at f1 is the trait finder so character traits and so you can sort of for example if i go and hover over or click on that one the chosen one appears over here so we've got uh, chosen one we've got bonuses with might so these th those three characters we see there I'll just zoom in a little bit so we can sort of see what's going on so but they've got might bonuses these have got Intrigue. She's got intrigue bonuses, uh, command bonuses up the top there, and also the chosen one's getting bonuses with all of these ones. Arcane knowledge. We're not seeing anyone at the stage with arcane knowledge. Yes, we are. There'll be a mage over there. Um, light bringers. So we've got a light bringer near where we're going to be operating down through this side. Um, any masters of geometry? Yeah. So this one here is a, a the mage again. Is is a master of geomancy. Uh, mediator. There's a couple of them on the map. Uh, mourning. So if we've, got, if we've got different characters that are actually in mourning for a reason, we can sort of see, and these are all motivations for that character to do certain things. And so the chosen one is actually mourning. Uh, Primal Waters is up the top there, um, which I don't know what that does actually. And sp uh, Specialist of Deep Ones. So there's probably going to be one of these. It'll only show if there's actually somebody that does this, I would guess. Otherwise it wouldn't show up. Let's just zoom out and see if we can see who that is. Oh, there it is over here. So this one here, this character is actually, the character that's underneath there is a specialist at dealing with deep ones. So there will always be those sorts of traits. If there's other, there may be other traits that just aren't being, aren't sort of being shown in through there. So that's the F1 key. The F2 key is also equally interesting. And so what this one is, the preference finders. And so I'll just, um, uh, in through here, actually I'll just get rid of that, sorry. I'll click on that one and then press F2. You know, it brings all this up, unfortunately, as well at the same time. So um, this is like the events. If I go to threats, will that make it a bit smaller? Or messages? No, it's bringing up the events as well. This is the preference finder. And so we've got different sorts of things, like where we can start to have a bit of a look to see if they've got the ambitions. Like the, this one dislikes ambition or likes ambition, dislikes combat. And you, and you can see there that it's actually cities that are actually showing up as well, where certain rulers in cities will actually also have these different likes and dislikes. And we can make use of this ourselves depending on what we sort of find in through here. So there's, again, it, it presents opportunities. We've got someone in here that dislikes cruelty, for example. We've got others that like cruelty. And so finding a, a ruler that likes cruelty, they're likely to clamp down on their, on their uh, any, anyone that shows, shows any dissent, like you know any of their, of their own population, for example, that, that is showing any sort of unrest, they're likely to be fairly heavy hand if they're, if they're cruel. Uh, liking danger as well. It's no one that dislikes danger. Now, there's a lot of them will dislike certain other things. There's a lot of them that sort of does go through this one, like this one dislikes. So a lot of them dislike the deep ones, discord, disease, uh, disliking gold. <laughs> there's uh, disliking madness. There's some that like madness and embrace it. So this one also just gives you a, a bit of a feel for what, the, for what the motivations are across the actual map itself. I don't know why there's so many, actually. But some of these, like disliking the undead as well, uh, some of them will actually dislike each other. And that also does present an interesting, uh, interesting opportunity for you as well. So you can sometimes sort of find characters that actually openly dislike each other. Anyway, I'm going to leave this episode here. I hope that was helpful in just how do we actually look at the, uh, look at the game and make an evaluation. Uh, it's, um, as I say, the most important one is just making sure that your shadow can creep or if you are happy to play where you're like if we were here for example we would then have to go through a, a one single place that would, would be really slow to try to get our our shadow to creep through if, if, if this hill for example if we swap with, with this planes which doesn't have anything at all we don't have any control over this one the shadow will eventually creep through there but it'd be slow so slow and we can't actually do anything with it so start again if you're in that situation only start only play the game if we first couple of games anyway if you've got direct access to low low security locations of humans direct like directly through these lines um or 
if you wanted to go for a bit more of a challenge that you've got covens like this one here with the similar sort of thing, direct access to low security locations. That's, that's really the path to victory. If you don't have that, start again. It's going to be a frustrating game. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. In the next game, we'll, we'll play this map and we will get started. We'll sort of take a deeper dive into, um, into our first agent and how the agents then work and also how the heroes work. Thanks for watching.